Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Louisa. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe and if you're coming back, welcome back. Today I wanted to have a look at a particular trait of narcissism that you can probably find in many people who fall into a toxic personality category. So you don't have to have full-blown narcissistic personality disorder in order to have narcissistic traits. Most people have a few narcissistic traits or they have narcissistic traits occasionally, not consistently all the time across many different relationships and many different spheres of life. So narcissistic traits can crop up in lots of different people and you don't need to have a diagnosis in order to talk about them. So today I'm not going to be diagnosing anyone because that's kind of impossible if it's someone that I've never met before and they've not consented to uh, give me information which would give me the information that I need to make a diagnosis. So obviously we can't diagnose anyone today but we can talk about the likelihood of someone having narcissistic tendencies and the sorts of behaviours that you can look out for with people who might have these tendencies. So there's a video excerpt that I want to show you and it's kind of an abridged version of an argument uh, which was featured on the Kardashians show. Um, I have seen the full argument but I think that this particular condensation of it is probably the bits that we need to talk about. You don't really need to see the full thing in order to get the idea. But essentially the argument between two sisters over the phone, so this is between Kim Kardashian and her older sister Courtney. This argument is essentially about Courtney believes that Kim overshadows her and tries to steal her thunder in lots of different ways and has done throughout their lives. And one particular way which has grieved her a lot was her wedding. So as you can imagine, the one day that you don't steal thunder from someone is their wedding day. Now I don't have any information about what supposedly happened. I don't follow the Kardashians, this just kind of popped up from a different people that I follow on social media and I thought that it was worth talking about. So I can't say for sure whether or not Courtney is justified in saying that her younger sister Kim tries to overshadow her all the time. That may be the case, it might not be. I can't really say, but uh, if you have some insight into that, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Okay, so let's have a look at the argument. Kim just weaponized Courtney's own children against her and admitted people in the family and Courtney's friends have a group chat called Not Courtney. Their feud continues. All of your friends call us complaining whether you think they're the ones going to you. They're all coming to us on the side saying the opposite to us. So we're all confused and we're on a group chat that's actually labeled Not Courtney. So we know and have to funnel what your friends are saying to us and have to figure out why you're such a different person and why you have this vendetta out. Okay, so the counter accusation. So Courtney is trying to have a conversation with Kim about Kim overshadowing her big moment. And Kim's defensive counter argument attack is that basically her sister has changed, that she is a different person and that everyone has noticed and even her friends have noticed and they all talk about it behind her back. And this is pretty much a classic narcissistic move. So in narcissism, this is known as triangulation. And triangulation is where you undermine other people's relationships by saying, oh, well, such and such said this about you and such and such talks behind your back and says these things to me and it may be completely untrue or it may be true 
But the fact is that they weaponize it as a way of isolating their target so that the target does not feel like they have any kind of social support. And this is incredibly important. This is how narcissistic abuse works. They need to isolate their victim and they need to cut them off from support networks, which might help them to get away from the toxic relationship. And there's, you know, plenty of uh, indication that since Courtney has essentially married someone who supports her, so her previous relationship, her long-term relationship where she had children, he, as far as I'm aware, never married her. And the Kardashians all seem to love that guy. But from the bits and pieces that I've heard about the show, he sounds like a total nightmare. <laughs> so the family had no problem with Courtney being in a long-term relationship with a guy who was a total nightmare, a guy who essentially contributed to the way that they treated Courtney. So he treated her just as poorly as they may have. Again, I'm not really sure of the ins and outs, but this would be a common dynamic in a narcissistic family system where they approve of certain people for you to be in a relationship with because that person perpetuates the cycle of abuse. And if you have the audacity to get into a relationship with someone who supports you, who takes your side, who calls your family out on their BS and who questions the family system and the family dynamic, which in narcissistic families tends to be very cult-like. If you're in a relationship where someone value, values you and you start to value yourself, then your family will start arcing up about it. They will be like, oh, you've changed. You're not the same person that you used to be. I don't like this new version of you. This person is a bad influence on you. And <laughs> that's because they don't have control of you anymore. They're finding it harder to undermine your sense of self-worth and to exert control over you. I want to be a part of that. Like, They're your friends, absolutely. the ones that you speak to on a daily basis. You are a narcissist. It is all about you. Your kids have even come to me with problems that they have and how you are, so... Is that helpful? You're like adding it into a fight to like have a side like it's you and my friends and my kids and everyone against me. It's like you're just a witch and I hate you. Okay. A lot of people would say, you know, don't ever tell someone that they're a narcissist, which, you know, has a lot of merit because I have made that mistake myself. I, um, when I was in the process of getting a restraining order on my mother, uh, one of the last conversations that we had over text, I did say to her that I believe she was a narcissist and I firmly still believe that. In fact, the more I learn about narcissism, the more convinced I am that my mother is a narcissist. But usually what happens when you say that is, I mean, either it's not true and it's an unfair accusation and it damages the relationship or it is true and they are furious and they come after you and they attack you even harder than they did before, which is essentially what happened with my mother. It's not usually very productive is kind of the takeaway from <laughs> most conventional advice about dealing with people who are narcissistic or using that label in general. So I understand where Courtney is coming from because I've also made that mistake, but also it's a rookie move, which um, I'm sure she will probably think about later on and go, eh, probably wasted my time saying that. Uh, but in many respects, because it's part of a TV show, she might not regret saying it because a lot of people are going to see that and think to themselves, well, is Kim a narcissist? 
and maybe that's the point maybe she wants to just get that out there so that other people can consider the possibility because as you can see kim is busy triangulating courtney not only with her friends and the other family members so kim said that her friends snitch on her and that the whole family so the adult family uh, talk about her behind her back and then she brought her kids into it so i can totally understand why courtney said that she was an effing witch because that's a whole other level of evil if someone is like abusing their kids or something like that then you do need to confront them about that uh, but this wasn't that sort of conversation it wasn't saying i i think you're you know damaging your kids i think that you need to get some help and take a step back because this is unhealthy your kids are unhappy this wasn't that conversation this was kim essentially trying to win an argument by ganging up on her sister with family friends and her own children and as Courtney herself said, is this helpful? Is, is this at all a, a helpful way to talk to your sister? And part of the conversation was Courtney saying, why would I want to be part of that? Why would I want to be part of this family that talks crap behind each other's backs, who stabs each other in the backs, undermines each other's relationships and essentially does this all for fame and money. And so it kind of seems from this brief part that I've had a look at that Courtney wants to get out of the family business, that she doesn't want to be a commodity any longer. It's always interesting that the happiest people are the people who generally don't overshare. They're not always on social media talking about the highlights of their week and their day. And they're not trying to overly convince anyone else that they are living a perfect life or have, you know, a wonderful house or wonderful children or anything like that, or they are the epitome of beautiful. They're generally pretty content with themselves and they don't feel the need to document everything but the people who do feel the need to constantly overshare are usually people who are deeply insecure and who need a lot of validation they need to be seen on a constant basis they need to be admired on a constant basis um, seeking a lot of admiration is another very narcissistic trait and sometimes the way that people do that is absolutely ridiculous like I don't know if you guys noticed but in that clip Kim is wearing uh, what I think was a t-shirt but it's so artfully ripped that essentially it doesn't even function anymore and she has to like tie part of it to her bra strap in order to hold it up and it's like is is this fashion are you doing this because this is how you you want to be seen you want to be seen only in like full face of makeup perfectly done hair and clothes that are so designer that they don't even function anymore and they are just a ridiculous waste of money but the last thing that you could see in that video was that Kim had essentially reduced her sister to tears. And at the end of the conversation, she wasn't upset by that. She didn't seem to have much empathy for her sister's uh, grief. And she just said, okay. And yeah, I don't know if it's the Botox or <laughs> what it is, but she doesn't seem to show very much emotion. 
and it could be a mixture of plastic surgery kind of freezing some of her facial range <laughs> her ability to express emotion facially is uh, compromised but it could be that she also genuinely doesn't feel much when it comes to her sister and that of course is another very narcissistic trait of not feeling much empathy towards anyone else when you do hurtful things and feeling that the ends justify the means. So winning an argument is more important than having a relationship with narcissistic people. They will deliberately break you down in order to make you controllable because that's the aim. The aim is always to be in control, to have control and to exert control by any means necessary. So they will use some very unsophisticated sledgehammer-like tactics to do that, which in this case is triangulation. And another method that people use to essentially bully others is called relational aggression. And that's when you actually actively talk smack behind someone else's back and you, uh, you know, start rumors and say things that you shouldn't say about someone to other people. So we don't know what exactly is going on, whether the friends have approached the Kardashians and tried to talk about changes in attitude or changes in behavior. Because don't forget that if you are someone who has lived in a narcissistic family dynamic, you will often have very narcissistic friends. And they also might be put out by the idea that you have some sort of self-worth, that you have social support from people who back you up, and they will also seek to undermine you. So did the friends approach the family to try and regain control of Courtney? Or did the family approach the friends and start talking all kinds of smack behind Courtney's back and trying to exert control that way? Or is it a complete fabrication and just used as a means of controlling her sister? Ultimately, who knows? But if you do find yourself in a situation like this, you can pretty much take anyone using triangulation like that against you as a, a way to settle it in your own mind that this person is not on your side. This person is not for you, they are against you. So I think it'll be interesting to see what happens moving forward if uh, Kourtney Kardashian decides to pull out of the series that they're still making if she decides to do her own thing and separate from her family in some respect, that might be something that she decides to do. And it can take many years and decades for people to decide to do that. I was in my 30s when I did that. And it's incredibly difficult, especially when you have been in such a tight-knit family where you know, part of the control system is that all of your finances are wrapped up with them. All of your work is wrapped up with them. You don't really have anything outside of the family system. And often the thing that does help people to break free from these systems is, you know, a, a new support network. So a new relationship or a new friendship group can be the catalyst that helps them to feel like they are able to do that. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully that was informative and you got something out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, what you think might be going on and how you think this will turn out in the future. It's, um, yeah, it's probably one that I will be watching with interest. Meantime, take care and I will see you next time. God bless. Bye.